You know when you are at the supercharger or at any charging station you see some numbers on the screen and you might wonder what the heck all that stuff means so I'm gonna explain a little bit so see here this is the average speed of the charging session since we started charging so many people you know only look at this number and think this is like the current speed but no this is not the current speed this is the current speed you're getting right now and you know it's kind of low now because I'm kind of full but you see now it will go up because uh, as you increase in speed the average speed will go up so if you want to look at the charging speed especially at the supercharger but the supercharger speed is very variable so don't look at this one you have to look at that one and this number means how many kilometers you have gained since we started charging here and if we switch view because this is like the kilometer one of the similar one is for uh, miles pretty much the same just different uh, units here but if we switch here go to setting and then set it to let me see language and units okay energy then it will show it a little bit different so now we have 85 percent and then the kilometers per hour for some reason it's switched moved over here and here you can see how many kilowatt hours you gain and also the average power output but this one is still an average of the charging session that's since the start of the charging session and of course I want to show something even a little bit more confusing maybe for some new users is that now we have 319 kilometers and I get 160 kilometers per hour right but you can set it to a more like optimistic view where I have 400 kilometers and then now I have 202 kilometers per hour but you know the range hasn't changed it's just the way you display it uh, you can I mean I can drive 400 kilometers uh, if I drive very carefully let's say I drive at like 60 70 kilometers per hour but the more for more realistic view you should switch it to typical at least typical for Europe and then in America they have ideal and uh, typical so that's a bit confusing but um, you see in a while now this the speed here will stabilize so at the supercharger as I mentioned you know the supercharger has very variable speeds so and that's why this one will also be like variable but as long as you're charging on let's say uh, uh, 22 kilowatt AC or something with very more or less stable speed then you can this one will be useful but at a supercharger this this number here is almost useless yeah and if you charge a car with a charter mode adapter it will show you voltage and amps and kilometers per hour so it's similar to uh, a supercharger but uh, unlike a supercharger before you can actually see the voltage and amps and you cannot see that anymore on superchargers you can only see uh, the kilowatt or the power output or input rather yeah uh, yes yeah, so it, also this one the kilometers per hour here is still an average since the start of the charging session so as the voltage goes up here uh, towards 70 percent this one well, uh, the, the power here will increase voltage will increase and then this one will go up uh, but you see it's kind of hard to figure out how many kilowatt we are charging at now so you, I mean you can take this number and multiply with that one you get like 35 ish I guess uh, but you can also switch to um, energy and then you see here I'm getting 37 kilowatt right now yeah and uh, this one actually uh, it depends also on your heater so I'm gonna try to switch off the heater now 105 okay you see goes up to 111 or something so we are actually receiving yeah about 100 and something and the heater sucked some some five amps and switch it on again then it should drop and if you see here on the app I actually have a button here where I can stop charging whereas on this screen the stop charging uh, button is grayed out uh, this also applies to supercharging you cannot stop it uh, but <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to be like this, but we're gonna try. I haven't really tried it because it's not recommended to stop charging from the car. You should go out and then stop it via the RFID and uh, like stop it from the station. So I'm gonna try it here and see what happens. <laughs> uh, charging stopped. All right, okay, so it can be stopped. Can it be start again? I think you cannot start it because this one is like, you need an RFID to, to like start it. So it will probably like, da -da -da error or something you know it cannot start or whatever um, yeah I would be surprised if it actually worked it says zero kilometers per hour zero yeah you don't get it once you stop it then that's it at least for for a station like this 
and right now we are plugged in uh, 22 kilowatt AC so the difference between AC and DC is that when you charge from AC you have to use the car's onboard charger whereas when we supercharge or we charge from Chadamo we use the charging station's charger and it bypasses the charger inside the car but right now the car has to do the conversion from AC to DC so you see here now this actually shows you the number of the voltage we are receiving from from the plug outside and we are getting 20 well almost 24 amp uh, the new cars oh well we just adjust a little bit I think actually the car actually, yeah the car is actually pretty smart it will adjust down the current if the voltage is a little bit high and it's actually kind of high now uh, I'm gonna show you now it, it can also show you how much energy I mean how much power you're getting so it shows you 18 kilowatt that is actually pretty pretty high because it's supposed to be 16.5 only but but because the voltage is so high this one is high now if you had a dual charger on the on the older version of Tesla Model S you can get 22 kilowatt and this will probably show like 23 or something maybe even 24 because this one is so high usually it's 230 volt now uh, we are charging at 400 volt so you see that this little uh, three there's like a th three with a circle in it that indicates that this is a 400 volt three phase so if you are charging on regular one phase uh, there won't be any three number there and uh, another indication is that if you go back here oh uh -huh. uh, if you go back here to distance uh, you will see that average speed will slowly increase we can, we can I guess we can switch off the heater uh, to get more like, more power here and uh, this one will go will tick up it will s probably stop at around uh, 75 kilometers per hour on my car but this also depends on which car you have because it's actually this kilometers per hour depends on um, typical or well <laughs> let me show something at 60 right okay if we switch to rated it will show you 76 you see so it's an indication but this is not like um, a benchmark it's not a reference number you can use to compare it between different types of cars uh, but of course you can use it as an oh hang on uh, my bad uh, you can use it as an indication of how fast you are charging so if we were charging at one phase only we will only receive about 24 kilometers per hour not 60 70 something that we're getting right now and also another thing you have to pay I mean uh, keep in mind is that let me switch here back in sorry for switching back and forth is that this kilowatt you see here is before charging loss this is the kilowatt the car is receiving and there is usually about 15% uh, a 10 to 15% charging loss depending on what kind of power you're charging at and whatever uh, so in reality we don't get 17 kilowatt we get like 14 15 kilowatt only uh, but when you saw the power input from a supercharger or a Chanimo, that is the net power in the car, in the battery. Yeah, and also I should show you that you can adjust uh, the amp here, but this is not possible to do on uh, DC when you, you are the supercharger or a Chanimo faster, because then, then the, the charging station will adjust the amp for you. But here you can actually adjust the amp, and it's very useful in case you want to like um, you you don't want to blow a fuse or something at your home or wherever yeah so this is the last variant which is charging at home and at home I only have 230 volt single phase uh, I have a blue plug but I only pull 20 amp from it so I don't blow the main fuse and see it takes a while to charge it up but uh, that doesn't matter I'm home slacking anyway and then after a while uh, like I said every time that this is an average since the start of the charging session so once you plug in right now it will take a while and then it will stabilize at 20 kilometers you can a uh, general rule of thumb when you have 230 volt single phase is that you will get uh, the number of amp is the number of kilometers per hour you get now there is one last variant that i can't show you uh, which is um, like a weird um, in norway and in albania i think you can have uh, 230 volt three phase not not 400 volt and um, the the Tesla wall box can utilize that but you cannot use the UMC to 
charge at it. So um, you get, you don't get uh, the same. I mean the uh, 1.73 times uh, that one. You know, uh, if you charge a 32 amp, oh, oh I don't. If you charge a 32 amp single phase, you would usually get 7.4 kilowatt before charging loss. Uh, but if you have the three-phase variant, you get about 8.4 kilowatts. So it's slightly more, but yes, I mean, any juice is good juice, right? And as fast as possible. All right, so there we have it. Pretty much most of it is covered here yeah, of the charging. Uh, I didn't show you like the different adapters and all that, but I have another video, a long ass video about it. But yes, I hope this was useful for you. Uh, it's not that complicated, the whole charging stuff. Uh, I mean, you, you learn it quickly. Uh, so, um, yes, uh, that's it for now then. Thank you for watching. And, oh yes, uh, if you like my videos and you want to support me, please check out my uh, uh, Patreon link. Oh yeah, everything helps. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.